Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports, brought to you by KillCliffCBD.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. We got John Brankus with us today. A lot going on in sports, John. A lot going on. Thanks for being here, buddy. Oh, man. Thank you so much. A lot going on. I got to have one of these. Goddamn right. Are you, Kill Cliff CBD. are you at the Kill Cliff uh, factory? What do they call it down there? The factory? The Messiah? I, no, it's, it's just it's HQ. Okay. It's HQ. So, Boom. you know, down here doing our thing. We're, we're um, plotting to keep America healthy with a clean energy drink. So that's all we're doing. 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. You will not piss hot. There is no THC in KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off and free shipping. It's our, our end all be all here on this show. Let me ask you should the Florida Marlins have maybe taken some before uh, hitting the field against Philadelphia the other day? Yeah, they definitely should have had a CBD drink before um, they hit the field. But, you know, now baseball is in the weirdest spot, right? Yeah, it's in such an odd. It's in such an odd spot. You could not pick a sport that's more socially distant, mm. right? I mean, like everybody's spread out. Um, you know, they've done. They've had their bubble. They're doing everything that they can. I, I, I mean, you know, I ask you, what do you think they should do? I kind of feel like it. Like once you've started, the MLS started. So we're doing a bunch of work with uh, Major League Soccer, and they have a fifty-four game tournament. And I think it's Dallas and uh, there's another team that dropped out because they had too many players that tested positive, but they kept moving forward with the tournament and it hasn't made a whole lot of news in terms of being controversial for moving forward. They were just like, look, you know, we got to, you know, we got to keep, keep moving forward. So they're moving forward. I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't think major league baseball should fold. I think that if they fold, it's a bad sign for everybody else. I agree. Um, but if they just keep marching on and saying, you know, it's just part, it's just like anything else, you know, but if, if a team is overwhelmed with the flu, that everything still goes on. So um, it's not like these, you know, even now think about how it, they're not endangering anyone other than theoretically themselves in the fatality rate or mortality rate um, of COVID for, you know, the age bracket and health conditions of, you know, guys who are in the uh, MLB is so low and they're not, you know, mingling with fans and shaking hands and signing autographs. It's, I, I don't see a reason to stop. That's my, that's my opinion, but I don't know how, I think it's more of a PR play than it is a pure health play. Yeah. And, and when I look at it, at least it happened to the Marlins. They're not in any form right. of contention whatsoever. I mean, right. it's shitty to say. And um, look, I, I know at the end of the day, we are a comedy show too. As well, well. The, the other part of that is yeah. the team but that they're they terrible. Were, the team that they were playing and hanging out with all weekend. The Phillies had zero positive tests after this Correct. shit happened. Right. That whole team got tested, and nobody is positive up there. So it seems like we're right. The baseball is a socially distant uh, uh, sport and can be played that way. And uh, the Marlins just were fucking around, probably. Well, and, and that, not paying and that, attention to the rules. There has been a rumor that uh, one of the players, uh, Juan Soto, uh, <laughs> was in the rumor mill for it. That allegedly he went somewhere, uh, perhaps after a game, and then came back and gave it to all of his teammates. Juan, now, not we, Juan Soto. We, Juan Soto is the guy from the Nationals. Oh, correct. What's um, his name? Yeah. Uh, fuck. I know you're talking Blanking about. on it. You know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, look it up for the Marlins. Mm. But uh, <laughs> this brings me to the NBA where they had their own situation with uh, Lou Williams from the Clippers who left the bubble, the NBA bubble, to go to a family funeral and then went to Magic City that night. If you're not familiar with that establishment, uh, it is a beautiful strip club, um, I believe, in the city that you are currently in, John. Um, so, really? Yeah. <laughs> if you want to pop on down there after work. I just... It's I open. just came from there, so you know. <laughs> from Magic, uh, whatever. Yeah, Magic City. A little, you yeah. have a little popcorn shrimp from the old buffet, lunch buffet at Magic City. <laughs> apparently, I, they have yeah. really good chicken wings. That's what all the players were saying. Uh, uh, apparently, and they've also got yeah. uh, great, great tits in there as well. Mm. But here's the thing: the, the the question was posed of how do you stop young multi million dollar alphas? who are out there saying, dude, I don't give a shit about COVID or I'm bigger than it, from going out and leaving unless you have a full bubble. Now, that, this is what Major League Baseball has been criticized about all week, is why didn't Rob Manfred 
create a bubble the same way that the NBA and NHL has. And by the way, the NHL has zero, zero positive COVID tests since being in the right. bubble, which is unbelievably impressive considering how filthy NHL players are. That's right. I mean, we, I did a sports science segment a long time ago on who is the stinkiest athlete. And we had MMA, football, hockey, soccer, everything. I mean, hockey won. We actually hired a NASA sniffer. This is a <laughs> – this is totally, you can look up the segment. There is, there is a guy whose job it was – he was called – his official title was Master Sniffer. And his job was to smell things before it went on the space shuttle. This is back when the space shuttle existed. And he would smell things to see if it, had, if it was going to have an odor because you're trapped up in space. So we had him come in to identify the smelliest gear. And wow. hockey won by a landslide. Yeah. And when we did bacteria tests on everything, it's just awful. Hockey is a filthy, smelly sport. Lacrosse. Yet for whatever reason, lacrosse, it's, I think it's because they're not as padded up. Lacrosse and football don't compare to hockey. Yeah. Um, and they, it genuinely is the, the smelliest sport on the planet. E easily, easily. And I think everybody easily. will uh, agree with that. If you've ever known a hockey player, um, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I, I've told some stories in the show uh, of how disgusting and dirtbaggish they are. But, but it, it, it comes as more as a surprise that these are the fuckers that are not getting COVID right now. <laughs> so what do you what do you I mean, what do you do with with the MLB and more importantly this is a this is a great cock tease for football coming back in the fall do you look at this data right now and see what's happening with the Marlins and say all right if I'm the NFL do we put all these players in a bubble um I don't know what you're going to do with college football though cuz you certainly can't do that with college players but you know with the NFL you can uh it would just take an unbelievably amount uh, an unbelievable amount of work, and I would assume right. you'd have to move them to a city that can house them. The more yeah. look, the mortality rate for for men between eighteen and forty that are athletes that are athletic is about I think point oh one ish percent. Mm -hmm. So unless there's a thousand people playing, there's a less than one percent chance that any human being will die. Does that make sense yes. to you? Yes, I, that's how math. Yeah. That's fucking I, math. That's yeah. how math works. That's yeah. math right there. You're throwing away. God, you're throwing around big numbers, like <laughs> point zero one. So here's uh, here's here's a question that I have: Is every everyone is asking? Okay, what's what does the science say? Let's let the science lead us. These data sets are so apples to oranges, mm -hmm. and so not the same thing that it, it feels impossible to make any kind of genuine judgment about, you know, rate of, of positive cases, mortality rate, you know, best practices. It just seems like, look, right this second, we need to understand that it's, th th this is sort of out of the bottle. And I think at some point, the only thing that is going to save us is when we say it's we're going to treat it like everything else and if i get sick i get sick i'm going to take the roll the dice on the 0.01% and if i'm at risk i'm going to you know quarantine myself or socially distance myself or wear a mask or whatever because i, I you know i may be uh, more vulnerable to covid but if i'm more vulnerable to covid it means you're more vulnerable to everything else right. and covid doesn't even come close to making up 50% of deaths that are caused by viruses. So if you were to eradicate COVID altogether, the side of the equation that's saying, oh my God, COVID is the worst thing ever. Well, it's not worse than everything else combined. So do you then turn your attention to everything else? It, it, and we can't possibly do that. So I think that we need to reach a point where we all have to be able to make up our own minds and realize if you're predisposed to getting sick from COVID, you're predisposed to getting sick from anything. So we have to figure out a way to move forward from there. Yeah, and I look, I agree with you that, that certainly Dan and I have taken a, a hard stance on this show about our beliefs in COVID, and we all align in that belief. Um, however, uh, there is a lot of players who are, who, who are worried, who are scared. Um, you look at today's news, uh, there's now five New England Patriots who have opted to sit out the entire season. Um, there was a handful of coaches and yeah. uh, and players in, in Major League Baseball who said that I'm going to sit out for the entire season. 
What yeah. happens, <clears throat> let's say for the NBA, right? Because we're, we're coming up on, I think, two days out from real games starting, as in real meaningful games starting for the NBA again. What happens if LeBron James or a Kawhi Leonard gets COVID and they're out for 14 days during the playoffs? I, I mean, I think that, that uh, obviously it's bad news, right? And it's going to make major headlines. I can virtually guarantee that they're going to be fine. Just I'm, you know, purely going on statistical probability. Sure. Um, you know, like statistical probability, even if they test positive, you know, how many, how many professional athletes in any of the leagues have contracted COVID and then passed away? Zero. I mean, like, I don't, I don't know of any. No, it's right? like it's, maybe I'm wrong. No, it's zero because it would be fucking daily news. Ma yeah, did Andre would, the they, Giant die? Was did Andre the Giant die from COVID? Not no, from that was this. like that was thirty years no, ago from like thirty years gigantism ago. or okay, whatever cool. the fuck. Yeah. I was just checking. You know, I was yeah. I was want to check in on Andre the Giant <laughs> and know how he died yeah. and let the audience. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Let the audience make up their mind. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you know, like I don't like I don't think anyone's died. So we're like we're. You know, everyone's running around like, oh, my God, what if LeBron James gets it? More than likely, he sh he'll show no symptoms and he'll sit in a room for 14 days and he'll be fine. Like, that's just the narrative of what's going to happen. I now, agree, but that, that will change. A reaction? I don't know. Yeah, but I, I agree, but that would change the playoffs altogether. Like, the Lakers are the favorite. They, they would be out. I don't see them getting through a round without LeBron James. Do you? I, I, I mean, I don't see them. No, I don't see them. If it was one of the earlier sure. rounds, maybe. I mean, with Anthony Davis, they could probably still win a first I'm round still, matchup. I, I got to tell, tell you guys, I'm just disappointed that we're not having a March Madness for the NBA because that was the answer. That's what I wanted to. That, was, that was the answer. Yes. It just, it's just this, this, like, honestly, I am obviously, as you know, a massive sports fan, but starting the season up and then having like, playoffs that are more traditional like dude we're in a big asterisk season anyway yeah let's just have call it the ultimate tournament single game elimination and who knows who'll win you know let's let the wizards you know they, maybe the wizards run the table who knows it would be <laughs> it would be amazing that, yeah, that would be, be amazing yeah it would be fun uh look the nhl format looks really fun mm -hmm. where it's just yeah. like hey man here we go it's every little, single night it's a little chaotic it is, but, but I, I like, like it, that yeah. um, because there's nothing like more it. exciting than NHL playoff hockey. I think you've got to make it chaotic because if you go into like some of these series are a fucking grind in the NBA. Yeah. If they even make it that far, like a seven game series is a fucking grind. It is. Uh, even if, even if you're, even if you're like 60% and they're 40% talent wise, it's still a grind. Even if it's bigger than that, sometimes it's a grind. And I got to tell you, uh, that is going to fucking wear dudes out and without the ability to go outside and, and blow off steam however you want to eating chicken wings at a strip club for example yeah. sure uh they're gonna fucking freak the fuck out <laughs> we're gonna see people fighting during the games yes. i guarantee you it's gonna fucking go horribly awry people are gonna be getting ejected forget about covid people are gonna be fucking on edge the most alpha human beings on earth yeah are gonna be packed in a tight space and on edge for 90 minutes a night yeah. How do you think that's going to fucking go? It's going to be goddamn gladiatorial. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait for it. And look, I hope none of the sports get canceled, obviously, but uh, I just don't know how to contain football or if they will because of the public outcry. Let's face it. We're in, a, in an election year, too. If NFL players start bitching, oh, thank you, Wiener, NFL, um, it's going to be the Democratic side on that one. Uh, I can promise yeah. you that. Dude, um, I mean, Drew Brees, Drew Brees folded up, right? Like yeah. super Oof. fast. You know, as soon as like, it, I mean, you know, there's COVID on the one hand and there's the, these, you know, social protests on the other hand. Yeah. And, you know, all, the, all of a sudden you get this mixed bag of, well, what's the real issue? What's the, what's the thing that's going to hold everything up? And I, I mean, I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen. All I know is post November, it's going to be different one way or the other. <laughs> yeah. Like our changes, it changes a coming and it's going to, it's going to happen. And, you know, second week of November whichever way this thing shakes out. If, you know, if we even have a president by then, remember Bush v. Gore, you know, went into the following year. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll see what happens. You know? <clears throat> yeah. November 3rd is going to be uh, real curious. Um, and I'm oh, look, yeah. and I'm, I'm curious about the baseball season. So let's say that everything shakes out. Uh, all right. Right. And it's just the Marlins. I think another team said they weren't traveling uh, as of an hour ago. That's probably well, the, the Philly. Philly New York game got canceled. So Philly New York game got canceled. Yeah. And I, I believe the Nationals said that they did not want to uh, 
uh, travel as well. Um, I'm not really sure why. Maybe they're playing them next. Um, but uh, either way, looking at the standings, knowing that we're in a 60-game uh, season, a lot of these teams have, have played three to four games already. Uh, and by the way, each, each uh, win is 2.7 wins. Right. Each loss is 2.7 losses. Correct. Think of it that way. So every, every game means something. Yeah. They've been fun to watch. I had it on a weekend at my house. I mean, mm-hmm. wall-to-wall. Uh, and th- shout out to Fox for putting on a triple header on Saturday. That was fun. Quadruple header. That oh, was yeah, four yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. The four Dodgers games. played You're at right. night. Yeah. They played the night game. Um, who do you like in the American League here, Brinkus? I mean, I, I, on, I'll give you my honest opinion. I think it's such a coin toss. Mm-hmm. Like the the assessment I could only make after watching everybody play because who stayed in shape, who's staying sharp. I mean, we're only just begun this, so I think any kind of prediction uh, would be futile at this point, honestly. Because I think that it, they're all new teams. I think it's unlike basketball; you can wind up pretty well, and you know, you know, if you've got LeBron on your team, you're going to be better than if you don't have LeBron. Baseball is such a weird sport. You know, if you look at the beginning of any MLB season, essentially we're starting the season over. Yeah. You know, the Orioles will go on a 20 game run and be like, oh my God, they're amazing. And then they'll lose 20 in a row. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, right, it's right. It's like, it just takes a while to shake itself out. So I don't, and, and again, you know, you're in a big asterisk season and I don't know, you know, how many players get COVID and who's actually been staying in shape. It's not a cop out answer. It's just a realistic answer. I think sure. I think the answer is the same as it would be for a playoff series. I okay. mean, obviously you have to be a good team with a decent defense, and you can got you got to score runs to win games. But I think uh, power starting pitching, mm-hmm. dominant starting pitching, is what tells the tale. And yep. no, but nobody in the American League is particularly with Verlander going down for who knows how long has it like fucking Tampa Bay does, and they're all young. Yep, like they're gonna burn through this season. Those kids are gonna fucking throw like a lot of really good games, the top three guys. And I don't know if anybody's going to be able to catch them. I think they're going to be so far ahead. It's so weird you say that, man. So I, I watching the games this weekend, um, we had Aubrey Huff on the show uh, maybe two weeks ago to give his predictions. And this was one of his dark horses. He said, watch out for Tampa Bay this year. Um, and right. the more and more I looked at it and they're pitching and everything else, I, I, I threw a bunch of money on them because, look, the odds were high. Uh, clearly, Tampa Bay is, was not favored to win the World Series. Um, but I'm a, I'm a Braves fan, right? So I was watching the game last night. There was 19 strikeouts. Yeah, they, I mean, that was a symptom of the Braves putting up 15 runs the day before and being gassed, in my opinion. 19 strikeouts is a, is yeah, a it's lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And they're, uh, but they're, their pitching staff is good from start to finish. Yes. Unlike the Braves, the Braves have a couple of pieces, but for the most part, that pitching staff is fucked. Yeah. Like, there's no way... The Braves are going to score a shitload of runs this year. I'll say that. Yeah. And they're also going to blow a lot of games in, in, in the sixth inning on. Yeah. I think, I think youth is probably going to win the day, right? If you, if you want to say, like, who's falling out of shape and who's going to bounce back the, the fastest. Yeah. I'd love to find out, you know, who does have the – I don't know the answer to this, but who has the youngest pitching staff in the league. I think um, that, you know, that's probably – It might uh, be the Braves, actually. It might, Max, I mean, Max, yeah. Max Freed and Soroka, yeah, and even Fulton, which is uh, twenty seven or twenty eight, I think. The other team that I've got my eye on is just thinking about this sprint model, right? The sprint towards the finish model of a, <laughs> of a short season is somebody like the Oakland A's. Yeah, um, the Oakland A's always one have of those these teams that can get hot. Yeah, that work together. Uh, they're look, they're three and one already. Yeah, uh, they're in first place, and they're in the division of of the Houston Astros, who just lost Verlander. It's a team that plays together. There is no superstars. They're all playing for each other. None of them are making a lot of money. But that um, shit only goes so far. I agree. You don't see that team winning a World Series. Well, in a 60-game season, potentially. They still have to play those series at yeah. the end. Uh, I don't think it stands up. I'm just saying we'll keep see. an eye out we'll for see. the A's. Well, I'm worried about uh, – imagine if Mark Teixeira was playing right now. Now, I don't know if those of you who weren't uh, fans of his when he was playing uh, won't know this, but those of you who were fans know that he – Usually has about forty game or forty games at the beginning of the season where he just sucks. Mm-hmm. Like he he hits like I think his uh, ap- career April batting average is like one sixty five or some shit like that. Right. But then he then he fucking torches it for the rest of the year. Well, if you've only got sixty six days, there's sixty games in sixty six days. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. If you've only got sixty sixty games, you're fucked. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like that guy's gonna have the worst year of his career. And imagine if you're one of those guys 
at the tail end of your rookie year or at the end of a contract and you're going into arbitration or a new contract. You yeah. know what I mean? You're fucked at this point. I would have opted out well, if I was in that situation. If I was well, Mark Deshaies right a, now. Brink, is your screen is it, off. I know because I'm reading breaking news. I don't know if you guys already knew this. Go ahead. MLB, MLB postpones. <laughs> ooh, oh, that was just an explosion. That's fine. Yeah. Um, MLB, it's fine. It was a, it, don't worry about it. Uh, MLB postpones all Marlins games through Sunday. Wow. So for an entire mm. week. That's, yeah. What do you? <laughs> I, I'm looking at you, ESPN.com. I, I, I'm, I'm reading it as well right now. It is breaking news. What do you do then? Great. Hey, an entire team know. is out of Major League Baseball. Don't worry about yeah. it. Um, not only for, look, the Marlins are shitty, so it's fine. If, if they're out of it, they're out of it. But what, I, what, like, do, what do they do? Who Who is playing them this week? What does the schedule look like? It was Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. And what do you do to make up those games? And you only have 60, and you're out a week now? I, and I know. What do you, how do you credit? I mean, do you get credits? I mean, they, do you get any kind of credit? <laughs> kind of like kind of like putting your name on the SAT, you get like 200 points. Like, do you just like get credit for still having players alive? Uh, <laughs> like, boy, who, that would be great. Which, fucking what, Hunger Games. Whichever players are alive yeah. at the end of the season, that's who wins. Yeah. By the way, I, I, it's going to yeah. be all, there's 780 Major League Baseball players, I think. Yeah. I think that's how many there are yeah. in the entire league. Then there's taxi squads that are traveling with them now. So you're looking at maybe 900, still under 1,000 though. So there won't be <laughs> one death. Get fucked, losers. Oh, <laughs> this is the wildest shit of all time. So what are you, you going to do? Know. What are you going to do with this, do. man? Try to have fun with it, man. I, I guess know. so. If uh, you're, what if you're a Marlins fan? I know all four people are probably upset. Yeah, right well, now, they, they were. Well, all, <laughs> yeah, both of them are furious. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And fucking Jeter's one of them. He owns a goddamn team now. The other one is J Lo. Yeah. Um, so, exactly. eesh, this is know. a mess, right. man. Uh, and this is well, a non-contact sport. Like, there's, uh, you know, you shouldn't be able to get it in baseball. South Korea had it figured the fuck out. Yeah, they haven't had a single positive test. Don't, don't you don't you just think that the what we're considering a positive test or how people are reporting it? If we, I mean, just. Do the math on the amount of asymptomatic cases. Does mm. everybody do six degrees of separation? I know people who have gotten COVID, right? D Dan, didn't you get it already? Yeah, I had it. I had it. It was, yeah. it was three days and that was it. Like, dude, I had, you right. know, you, unbelievably so you had it, mild. You had a positive system. result. Yeah, I, I had yeah. very, very mild symptoms. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it wasn't worse than a, a flu or a, a, like a really bad cold. And uh, it was about three I, days. I was over it and that was it. Like I was out of town. Yeah, I, I was out of state. And yeah. I unfortunately know. I mean, I know, you know, just since March, you know, I've known people who have passed away from influenza and people who have passed away from car accidents, people who have passed away from cancer and people who passed away from, you know, something labeled as COVID. Uh, but I don't have like the, oh my God, you know, I know a hundred people who have passed away from any one thing. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I think one unfortunately, it's just COVID. another thing. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, know. I, the, and the only people I know are, you know, unfortunately, they were just older, and it was credited. You know, like I, I, I have a good friend's father who passed away. They said it was from COVID, um, but I think it would have been from something else if it wasn't that, or maybe it was. I don't know. It, it just seems like it's yet another thing that is in a long list of a lot of things. So. Yeah, I agree. And like, mm. I look, I've known quite a few friends yeah. who have had COVID, including three that I was with during the time that I got it. And, you know, everybody had the same system, uh, symptoms. Um, you know, we're not in the, that age bracket. We don't have respiratory problems or anything else. So, again, it was about three days. I, I had some weird diarrhea, and that was about it, um, to be honest with you. Yeah. I've always well, got diarrhea. Weird diarrhea is kind of fun. Uh, no, yeah. this, it, it was not. Um, but, uh, you if, know, loss of appetite. Let's be honest. Yeah. yeah, let's be honest. If you have to choose between diarrhea or vomit, you take diarrhea 100 out of 100 times. It's at least funny. You yeah. know, like vomiting is not, it's not funny. I would, I mean, I, right? don't, I don't feel that horrible when, I'm, when I have diarrhea. I could, have it, I could feel great and have diarrhea. Not the same with yeah. vomiting. If you go up to three times right. a day, though, it's that sit down where you're like, oh, man. And then you're just reapplying well, gold, can, gold bond after that yeah, over and over again. But you can still talk. You're you right. can still talk though. You're you know right. what I mean? Yeah, you're you can right. make jokes about it. I use a bidet. It's just, you anyway, know, vomit, so. vomiting's, yeah, vomiting's tough to be funny. It's tough, you know, while you're vomiting to be funny. Sure. It's, just, it's tough. Sure. It really is. Mm. Uh, let me ask uh, you. On that note, yeah. listen, I got a roll. Mm. I got a roll. Um, I, have a, I have a hard out. Um, 
but I want to make sure that, that we pump up the next show that we're going to be doing. Cause yes. I'm super excited about this. Do you yeah. want to tell the audience? Yeah, that's going to be tomorrow. We're going to do a show on UFOs. Yeah, we're going to do a show on <laughs> UFOs. The So, you know, obviously you've read the reports. The Pentagon is going to release uh, in a couple weeks some of their findings of some of their downed, uh, is it aircraft or is it, uh, uh, it seemed like on ground. It looked like a rover, like a rover Mars. Said, yep. Yeah. Not of this earth vehicles. So let me, I'm going to prime everybody. If you deny this story, are you now a conspiracy theorist? Ah, <laughs> yeah. there you See? have it. There, there you go. have it. Um, so that UFO All show right. will be uh, shooting tomorrow. Right. Uh, Brankus, uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow, buddy. All right. God bless, guys. See awesome. you, buddy. Uh, so, Dan, I want to switch over to the American League here. I mean, uh, the National League. Um, with the National League here, uh, you've, I, no doubt, um, I was not with you this weekend, but I can fucking bet my life mm -hmm. that you had baseball on every single waking second uh, this weekend, as did I. Um, it was nice to have on in the background. Yep. Who has impressed you from the National League? And uh, the Miami Marlins are 2-1, and one, by the way. That's not impressive to me. <laughs> uh, who's impressed me is the Cubs. They look really nice. Uh, they're not Rizzo has slimmed down, and he's got yeah, what, he looks three good. home runs. He looks good. They're, uh, they're like, I think, third or fourth in the league in runs scored, and they're not giving up a lot. Right. They're, they're, their pitching has been very, very good. Um, the Marlins have had the benefit of only – they've only scored 17 runs in those three games. And they've given up 15. So it's not like they're blowing people out. These are just like. No, one, but it, yeah, it that's is about, what it is. You know, five and a half runs a game. That's not bad. Uh, these days it is. Yeah. Pitching, pitching seems to be a little bit ahead of hitting mm -hmm. uh, insofar as contact, but not power. There's been a lot of home runs so far. A lot. So teams that can hit home runs, like the Dodgers haven't looked all that great just yet, but I know the pitching that they have and I know the, the hitting that they well, have. Kershaw is out now. So For a, he'll be back. He will be back. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if he would be back. I mean, it, 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 you never know, right? Yeah. You never know. But uh, I, the, the other team that's really impressed me so far is the fucking Padres. Um, the Fathers. Yeah. Young team. Like they are a young team, but they're, uh, they, they look like they're on a little bit of a streak right now. And that's a big deal. For this kind of situation where there's only 60 games yeah. like if you can start out hot you got a lot of fucking room on the back end or not there's not a lot of room on the back end for people to catch up with you um <clears throat> i agree and if you're going in that uh mold that we're talking about of of young teams with uh players who are just sprinting towards the finish mm -hmm. that that would certainly fit in that that category and that one specifically the other one uh the other team that we didn't talk about that has that same kind of feel in the american league is the blue jays they have a lot of young, young talent. Man, I, I'm glad you brought them up. So I love the Blue Jays. I love watching them play. Um, Bo Bichette and uh, Vlad Jr. And all Vlad Jr. looks guys. like he came in even fatter than last year, by the way. Have Which you seen him play yet? is amazing, right? Like, he looks awful. Yeah, he looks terrible, but uh, they're dropping bombs, and it's a fun team to watch. My concern with the Blue Jays, because I, I would have put them uh, in that category, and I want to throw in some money on them. But the problem that they don't have any form of home stadium and they just keep getting switched to different um, stadiums night after night. Yeah, I don't know if that'll it's the matter. the weirdest thing of all time to me. We'll see, we'll see if that comes into play or not. It's, it, could, it could be one of those things that like galvanizes the team. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, harsh times galvanize people. That's what harsh times breed hard men, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe it'll happen, but they're young. And there's not a whole lot of like, veteran leadership on, in this lineup. No, but imagine how much uh, weight Vladimir Jr. is going to put on not being able to go home and just eating out in every single city. Well, I mean, he's going to be eating the spread mostly, which is probably worse. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it's like these days, but I saw the spreads back in the day. This, by the spreads, I mean the fucking ungodly amount of food that's in a Major League Baseball locker room on, lot. on tables yeah. after the game and yeah. before the game, too. Yeah. It's everything you could think of. Good food and not good food. Yeah. And I don't think Vlad Guerrero Jr. doesn't look like the kind of guy that's eating a lot of good food. No, no, he doesn't. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, mm. But I, I, that team is a blast to watch, man. Um, they are, but their fucking oldest player is like 32, yeah, I think. If, 33. If, if that, yeah. And it's, and it's uh, uh, Ryu, for, the guy that pitched for... Uh, for the Dodgers, he's there now, right? Mm -hmm. That's their oldest player, but he hasn't fucking talked to anybody, probably, no, right? He doesn't no. speak English, no. so... Uh, a lot of them don't. 
yeah. to be honest with you, I don't think Vlad Jr. does. Like I'm looking, I'm looking down the lists. I st- I sorted by age on their roster, and I'm looking down this list. And so far, he's the only guy. Like Tanner Work, I know who he is, but for the most part, he's the only guy that I really am and familiar with. Until you get down to, uh, Joey Joe Panic. There you <laughs> go. Twenty nine. Get the disco, dude. Man. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, it's like fucking everybody's twenty five years old. It's just a fun old. young lineup full of yeah former. God professional damn. major league baseball so they've players, got, kids. They've got Vlad Jr. listed as 6'2", 250. Not a prayer. He is 275. Oh, it's Easy. Not higher. He looks like fucking uh, uh, Panda did I'd go that year he came that. out. I'd say 285. He could be 285. Have you seen him yet? Have yes. you seen him play? He's, yeah. He looks fat as he looks, shit. He looks like he's 285. He's like, he's like lumbering down the first base. I'm like, yeah. God damn it, dude. Yeah. Like the, you got a couple more years of that shit before it catches up to you. Then you're fucked. Well, that's what happened to Prince Fielder. Yeah, um, you know, Fucked eventually his neck he started up. having injuries and all that other shit. But uh, he was vegan, though. Do you know that? Shut up. Yeah, you're kidding. Yeah, I had a fat relative who was vegan once, and I you, was like, what "Don't are you eating? donuts are vegan, bro." I know. Like, uh, so were <laughs> chips and everything else. Yeah. I asked. I asked the same question. I was like, "What?" I was like, "Do you, do you mind?" Usually, vegans are pretty thin. What are you eating? And it was like potato chips and uh, donuts and all that yeah. shit. And I was like, uh, "No." Bill Hicks did a good joke about this in like 1991. And we've nothing's changed in America since then, obviously. No, no. Uh, he was like, it's it's amazing to see somebody that's both obese and malnourished at the same time. Yeah, it's like drinking Pepsi and eating Funyuns all yeah. day. Yeah, it's disgusting. Um. Anyways, back to uh, these teams. Yeah, I think, I think the Dodgers because of their youth and the pitching staff, Bueller and fucking uh, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Urias, the guy with the yeah. fucking stupid glasses. Mm-hmm. They're both fucking. 20, they're 25 and 23, respectively, I think, or 24 and 23. Yeah. And they are fucking gassers, man. They throw the ball fast as fuck. Um, and if, short, if Kershaw was there, man, I would, I would say the Dodgers. He's on the 10-day uh, DL. I don't think it's going to be a it's problem. Only 10, eh, if it's yeah. only 10, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with the Dodgers. They can make it through that. I mean, you got, you got uh, uh, what's his name? That goofy kid from the Braves, uh, Alex Wood, yep. was over there too. Yeah. And he threw pretty well last year. So I think they can hold on until he gets back. If he, uh, if he doesn't Yankees, come back. The Yankees are a fun team to watch in the AL. Yeah. I'm, um, <clears throat> I think this year's Yankees team could have set the record for most home runs in the season again. Easily. Dude, Stanton's, when I saw Stanton come up to <sighs> bat for the, his first bat and just hit a ball that passed um, – Bob and Doug on SpaceX. I yeah. was like, wow. That was the first time since twenty, like mid twenty eighteen, that I saw him turn on a ball inside. That's yeah. a really good sign for the Yankees. Hopefully, he stays healthy because when that guy's healthy, everyone in this in the stadium. Not that there's anybody there now, but everyone in the stadium is in danger. Yeah, that dude will fucking <laughs> murder you with the baseball in your face. Um, speaking of which, uh, were you a fan of Fox's? Uh, CGI fans into the the stands. Of the I Cubs thought game. it was kind of neat to be I did honest, too, man. I, and I, like, the I back, liked it better than an empty stadium. The background noise that they're playing, the fan noise. I know they're doing it because they don't want us to hear all the swearing <laughs> that's happening between the There's players. A lot. As a matter of fact, because it's so quiet on the field, uh, people have been ejected from the dugouts multiple times so far this year because the umpire can hear them. And there's also hear been everything. Yeah. There's also been one like. People left the, the Brewers, and I can't remember who they were playing, but they all jumped onto the field, cleared the benches, but they didn't actually fight or anything because they could hear each other talking shit from across the field. Right? Yeah. So that's the new thing. You can hear people talking shit. Which I enjoy, and I think it'd be they awesome. They should mic that shit up. up put it on put HBO, on it. Exactly. dude. What the fuck? Yep. Yep. Like, I want to hear that shit. That. Same. That'd be great. I've always wanted that. I've always wanted a fucking, and it's one of the reasons, other than just sports shows being popular, we started the show. I've always wanted a sports show where people just talk shit. Yeah. And say fucked up shit the yeah, whole time. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. It man. would be amazing if those players were mic'd up. It would oh, be the man. greatest thing of all time. And it would it would really help the sport, but uh they won't because then people would have to censor themselves and all that other shit. They tried it in NASCAR. I think they still do it in NASCAR, to be honest with you. But there's certain things that you can't say when you're talking. You mean like the N the N word? Fucking mess. Well, homeboy didn't figure that out when he's no. he blurted it out during that eye racing, but uh <laughs> Yeah, I, the, the rest of it is fine. Like, talk shit. You should be able to have a good mm-hmm. time and say fucked up shit. And, uh, yeah, you're right. Put it on a cable network, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, keep monetizing, brother. I don't understand it. Uh, we got some sponsors, D'Anthony, to pay for the show to be on the air, luckily. 
Um, and uh, and then afterwards, I want to get to your thoughts of whether or not uh, baseball will actually return mm-hmm. after this breaking news. Uh, first and foremost, like we were talking about at the top, our chief sponsor for the, the year on sports is KillCliffCBD.com. 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. If you have joint pain, muscle pain, you've got to get some CBD inside your body. Go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Type in the promo code DRINKINGBROS. Get 20% off and free shipping. Uh, three amazing flavors, uh, orange kush, grape, and uh, the mango, brother. Big fan of that. Uh, so go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off and free shipping. I, I'm I'm the grape guy. Grape is of all time is mine. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 30% off. 30% off. Three zero to anybody who is a member of the military, a first responder, a teacher, or works for the government. You heard that right. Uh, they're trying to cover everyone during these times. Uh, it's weird, man. A lot of people at home and all that other shit. Sleep in comfort. Um, you're spending a lot of time in bed watching fucking Netflix. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. If you were a regular civilian like myself, uh, you still get 25% off, and uh, they're giving two free pillows away with a mattress. That cooling mattress is at my house, and I'm going to enjoy that tomorrow. Uh, I am amped about it. Uh, also, uh, GhostBed's got a 36-month no-interest pay-as-you-go program that is applicable with all of the deals I just mentioned. Go to GhostBed.com forward slash drinking bros today uh, and get on it, man. You can get a fucking bundle package for like 30 bucks. Uh, last but not least, Anthony. Uh, so my bookie. My bookie. They, cha- they, right. they changed their website today. Yeah, they did. Or yesterday, rather. I guess it was yesterday. So we saved the best for last. We're gambling uh, on everything pretty much these days. Uh, under the sun i even junkied it up if you're not by the way if you're not on drinking bros sports the private facebook group sign up now it's free um and uh, uh i'm putting my real bet slips on there I, and you know me I, i'll i'm very honest on this show when i go to mybookie.com promo code drinking bros doubles your deposit they'll match you dollar for dollar so whatever you mm-hmm. deposit on mybookie.com boom you will get that back just for signing up um i i tell people what i'm betting on the show and then there's, there's the occasion, the rare occasion, where I feel like a junky dirt bag, and I'll throw in some last-second bets. I had to last Friday for M- MLB, Major League mm-hmm. Baseball. Um, I bet on the Dodgers and the Yankees, and uh, I won both games. That was the only two games on Friday for opening day. And uh, the, people, the people got on me. They were like, hey, man, you said you won't, you won't bet on daily baseball. I will not. It was opening day, and I was bored, and I was lonely. <laughs> and um, I hope everyone forgives me, but you did win. If you took those bets with me, uh, go to mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros. Um, we'll we'll Ooh. match your deposit dollar for dollar. Double your deposit. There are a fuckload of new prop bets on here too. Ooh. By the so. way, one of them came th- th- true this week from our celebrity death show. Mm. Um, I'm going to have to go back to listen to it to see what it was. But Regis Philbin died last week. Yeah. Uh, was it you? Um, Did you get him? Well, here's the thing. I forget who he was against. If you go to mybookie.com, you can also b- bet on celebrity deaths, which is super creepy, but it's a fun little bet to place. And then when it happens, whoopsies. Mm-hmm. You, you know what else you can bet on? You can bet this is fucking great. I love this. So you <laughs> Obviously, you followed the Johnny Depp, Elon Musk situation. Yes. He wants so, to fight him in a cage. Match. Yeah. So currently, my bookie has Musk at minus 600 and Depp at plus 300. I... I think I'd take Depp. Well, here's the deal. I think Depp smokes like two packs a day. Yeah. So I would probably get the advantage to. He's gonna get to, uh, he's gonna get like Elon fast. Musk I, has. Probably, Elon Musk would hire like he's a, a fucking. Yeah, he would train like a motherfucker. Yes, I mean he would I'm have Ro- he would have Rogan. Yeah. Bring everybody from UFC and train his ass. Yeah. Minus six hundred. Uh, Johnny Depp is also like twenty years older than him. I think. Yes. Right. Well, not I, twenty. Musk. I would say ten or twelve. I would say 10 or 12 years old. I, I, I put Musk in his late 40s. He's, yeah, he's 49. He's older than I thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's some other ones. Um, who would win? In a, I don't know who these people are. Go ahead. Uh, read, read them off. Uh, well, Clay Travis. Oh, yeah. Who, who the fuck is that? Sports. Uh, he's got a huge sports podcast. Never heard of him. Darren. He's Ro- a dick. Ro- he's got me blocked on uh, Twitter. Darren Rovell. I fucking hate Clay Travis. Um, uh, Darren Rovell from uh, ESPN. Yeah, they hate each other. Um, I don't know who that is either. 
Clay Travis is a, is a piece of shit, by the way. Um, I, he looks like a piece of shit. You know who's friends with him is Kelly from Vegas. Oh, really? We should yeah. uh, get oh, his fuck, man. home address from her and go pee on his shit. Yeah, exactly. It's like pee on his lawn. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, yeah. why are these brown spots? Because I've been peeing on your lawn, <laughs> bitch. There's nothing you can do about that. In that fight, I've got Darren Rovell. Who's favored? Um, it is Clay Travis minus 220. Ah. Darren Rovell plus 155. That's not, uh, the, uh, I'm taking the underdog. I'm taking Darren Rovell on that one. Darren For Rovell, sure. the. Mm. Clay Travis looks like a fucking pussy. They both look like pussies, to be honest. Uh, Darren Rovell, is, he looks like he works out at least. Like he's, got, I can't, he's in pretty good shape. I, I can't tell from these pictures. He looks tiny. I'm going, I'm going that one. Who else, who else is on there? Uh, it's a fun little game. I Elon, this. I don't know what this, it's cage fight heroic response. I don't know if this is like some kind of charity thing, but it's. So Mickey, here's what happens. Mickey Rourke versus Elon Musk. Yeah, so here's what happens. The wrestler. Yeah, yeah. The wrestler. Look, Mickey Rourke was a professional boxer for a while. Yeah, he might taking, fuck Dion Musk I'm taking, up, dude. I'm taking Mickey Rourke all He's day minus long. 400 here, even though he's 75,000 years Doesn't old. Doesn't matter. And half dead. He, was, he uh, was a professional boxer for many years. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, there is a trial going on with uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard right mm-hmm. now. Um, in this trial, which is a defamation suit against the... The Sun, one of those British tabloid papers, right. they called Johnny Depp a wife beater in it. He mm. said, I'm not a wife beater. And it's taken this thing all the way to trial in hopes to winning you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars because he's bankrupt. However, because of the circumstance of it, they were allowed to call Amber Heard to the stand and ask her every single question about whether or not she was beaten. She said yes. She said one of the reasons uh, that, sent Je- that, that, that set Johnny Depp off was that he got a hold of her text messages and he accused her of cheating on Elon, on him with Elon Musk. Mm. Um, he said, you tell that mollusk, because the, all the text messages are part of discovery, so those went out to the, the jury and the courtroom and the rest of the world, you tell that mollusk, uh, I will cut his fucking dick off uh, and stuff it, stuff it in his mouth, I believe is what Johnny Depp said about Elon Musk. Well, clearly this trial has been very, very public. Um, and then Elon Musk announced after hearing it that uh, he was, would like to challenge Johnny Depp to a fucking cage match fight. So that is where you're getting this. And I think the money is supposed to go to how, charity. How is Mickey Rourke involved in this? Well, how, how isn't he involved, Dan? Mm. Uh, he needs to be involved in everything like this. No, I don't think so. ever go down. I'm not sure how Mickey Rourke's involved in it. The hilarious thing about this is, so Amber Heard and uh, Johnny Depp split after that, mm-hmm. and then she goes and dates Elon Musk for a year. So yeah, chances are she was fucking him. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, why not? It's, it's Elon Musk, dude. Cele- the celebrity divorce uh, as well. Ooh, who do we got? I can get um, some insight into those. <laughs> who do we got? Well... Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott broken up by 2021, and yes is minus 1,000. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was going to say go all in on yes. Yeah. Ken- Kendall yeah, yeah, yeah. Jenner and Ben Simmons broken up by 2021, minus 1,500 on the yes on that one. Eh. Uh, I think I might take a runner on that one. Yeah, I mean, if you can Because 2021, everybody, he's going to be he's quarantined in the bubble. Yeah. until fucking whenever, He can't dude. cheat, he can't do shit. Yeah. yeah. So he's in the bubble. I would, I would bet on the, the other way. And not only that, here's the thing. If you're dating a Kardashian, any one of them, you were the dumbest man on the planet if you don't, if you try to get out of that relationship, you're, it's just billions of dollars and mm-hmm. you get to fuck the Kardashians all day like, and then just go on vacations and <sighs> shit. What is hard about your life in that situation? I don't know. I don't understand it. I look at, I look at Tristan Thompson with Khloe Kardashian, who, let's face it, made herself pretty goddamn hot. Um, he was banging her. They got, they got a billion dollars. What are you doing going out and cheating on her for? That guy's going to be fucking washed up in like three years. Yeah, he's done. It's at, at filthy ass strip clubs in Nevada. Uh, he went, when he could be living that fucking Kardashian life, bro. That just oh. makes zero sense to me. Uh, let's see. C. Jenner and Sophia Hutchins. I don't know who C. Jenner is. Who is that? Chris Jenner. Jenner? Yeah. She's a lesbian now? Uh, C. Well, there's a Kylie and then there's a Chris, but it starts C. with a K. Yeah, I don't know who. Who, who uh, is Sophia Hutchins? Don't. Oh, oh, that's the other Jenner. That's uh, fuck. Yeah, Cody. Oh, I don't care. If Cody Jenner. He, yeah, there was, he wasn't important enough that. for them to even put his first goddamn name in 100%. here. percent. Justin Bieber that. and Haley Baldwin. They're gonna stick it out. They're religious. Yes is uh, plus three hundred. Yeah, I'm gonna say yes on that for sure. They're gonna. They're 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 pretty religious in a weird way. 
Cameron uh, Diaz and Benji Madden. I don't know who Benji Madden is. Benji Madden's the lead singer of uh, Good Charlotte. Oh, good. I'm glad I don't know who that is because yeah. that's the shittiest band They're of all They're going to stay together. She quit Hollywood for him to well, raise a kid. And... Minus one or plus 110 for the yes on that one. Yeah, I say yes on that one. Kurt sure. Russell and Goldie Hawn divorced by 2020. I didn't nope. know they were married. Not one prayer. They're not legally married. They've been together for 50 years. There's no. There's not one prayer they're going to break up. What's Are the you... fucking yes or no on that one? Yes is plus 600 that they're going to be divorced. Oh, uh, wait, divorced? Yeah. No way. Plus 600 on the yes, minus 2,000 on the no. Do they have? Oh, minus 2,000 on the no. Yeah, yeah. I say no. That's the, yeah, there's, that's why. Um, yeah. No, they're, they're going to be together till death. You can Let's take see. that to the bank. Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. Eh, it's Scientology, and they've, they've both agreed to the swinger lifestyle 20 years ago. So, yes, they're going to be together. Um, that's a plus 600. Okay. Uh, Oprah and Stedman is a plus 700. Yep. That's not happening. Nowhere Don- to go on that one. <laughs> Donald Trump and Melania, divorced by 2021. Not a prayer. Is Yes is minus 130. Really? Yep. So I, I can tell you why they put that line there at my bookie. There's no fact. fucking way that's I'll happening. tell you why they did it. Um, here's why they did it. To troll Trump, probably. No. To if They're assuming, because right now on my bookie, they've got uh, Biden winning the election. Right. Uh, and are you putting money on Trump in this one? I already did. I already did too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but now the odds are not in Donald's favor. When I bet it, he was like a three to one favorite. Now yeah, he's I an underdog. To, I may need to rebet. I'm gonna I'm going to rebet on that on my bookie. But uh, with that, the reason why that bet exists is they're thinking that he's not going to get reelected and she's going to fucking do south in uh, next year. Not in not in that amount of time. By 2021, the so election's in it. November. Yeah, the inauguration is not until mid January. Yeah. Like get fucked, dude. I'm, I'm with you. I think that's, that's a bad it. bet. Yes, yeah, I agree. I'm going fucking new on that one, and I'm putting as much money on it as they'll allow me. Um, <laughs> Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner. No, same question. There's they're no going fucking way. The end, man. No, they're, they're in it together. No, is minus seven hundred. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, they're in it. Uh, Demi Lovato and Max. Eric, Eric. So they just got engaged uh, about a week and a half ago. That's going to be new. What's the bet on that one? Uh, yes is minus 1,000 that they will break up by 2021. So no is plus 600. Doesn't seem likely. Well, you got to go a full year and a half, and it depends on if she starts uh, dipping into the yayo again on the drugs. Mm. I'd stay away from that bet, actually. Um, um, I don't she know. goes on a fucking hard drug binge, question is will she stay alive too because she's also on the celebrity death list you mm-hmm. know that right well she's od'd a number of times now yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um great voice this is this one will uh this one will be uh nice for you it's ben affleck and whatever oh uh, yes anna anya de armas whatever she is she's fucking hot um, uh, what's the odds on that one yes is minus 2000 that they'll break up by 2021 oh 100 percent yeah, 100%. You think they will break up? Yes. Yeah, they, they will definitely break up in 2021. Here's no, by 2021. Oh, by 2021. Uh, you have five months left in that bet. Yeah, I'd take that. I'd say yes. Uh, here's why. Here's the thing with Big Ben. You know I love Affleck more than life, um, party-wise. I think there's better actors in this world. Sure. Is there a better partier? Probably not than Ben Affleck. Um, I only like Affleck on drugs and alcohol. Now, When he's boozing and really fucking going for it, um, his eye will wander. So will his hands and so will his penis. Mm. Now with uh, Homegirl, so here's here's my assumption on this one, why they're going to break up. I think as soon as maybe these states reopen a little more and he's able to go back to Vegas on the reg like he used to, He's going to get fucked up and he's going to get a little handsy with somebody and, uh, and they're going to break up. Now, if this COVID bullshit shuts anybody in through the end of the year, then yeah, I, I think that's a perfect girl to spend your, your last five months of the year with. Because let's face it, you're starting to get into cuffing season territory mm-hmm. here um, as a dude or a girl. If they start shutting shit down again, it's hard to bang off a tender and everything else. You got to put somebody in house for the next five months. Yeah. It's almost like uh, dating somebody winter quarter at Ohio State. You got to get a bang made. Yeah, dude. That's what uh, Frank Reynolds from It's Always Sunny gets. He gets a maid that can also bang. Yeah. So she keeps the place tidy. Um, it used to be a fucking uh, just a wife. Yeah. But that's not okay anymore, so now you have to pay them. Winter quarter girlfriend is what we used to call it in uh, college because it was too cold to go out and uh, and chase ass all the time. Speaking of Ohio State, we got some breaking news regarding Ohio State. Uh, they are going to cap the fans at twenty thousand in the stadium and ban tailgating. 
What? If if football season is played this fall, I'm going to go ahead and stop you right there. Uh, not a prayer that college is going to be played this fall. I, my prediction is I'm going to stand firm on this and say that it's in the spring. Um, and uh, there's no way you're going to put – you can't put kids in a bubble. More importantly, you can't put college kids in a bubble to go and play college games. Like You can, no actually. Thing. You can do it. We just aren't ready to admit as adult human beings what that requires. And the one thing that it requires is vaginas. Yes. You got to be able to fucking put your dick in something. Yeah, you for do. that. There's no way you're keeping those kids locked up for four or five months. Yeah. Like they, after they win a game, they want to go fuck everything that moves yeah. and get shit housed. Yep. And you should let them. Yeah. But I you agree. just have to fucking bring the whores in and check them for shit. I agree. I'm, I'm with you on like this. Like if, if the NBA was serious about this shit, they would have brought the fucking strip club to the bubble and not the other way around. Yeah. Like, tell me what fucking, if you're out there and you're a fucking sex worker, you're a stripper or something yeah. like that, do you not want to be in that NBA bubble right now, Do like dancing every night? Yeah. Holy shit, you'd be a fucking millionaire by the time you left. I know. That's good for everybody involved, including the wieners of the dudes. Yeah, and also, if, you're, if you are a stripper out there who's listening to the show, send your nudes to at Drinking Bros Podcast on Instagram, and uh, Dan will rate them. And then pass them along to uh, no one. The FBI. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, this was a sting the whole time, bitch. <laughs> uh, um, this Ohio State thing is not going to work. You've been to Ohio State uh, numerous times. Like, dude, tailgating is what, a quarter million people outside yeah. the stadium? I mean, it's fucking chaos. The same thing down in Louisiana. There's no fucking way this yeah, is dude, happening. Yeah, you dude, you have to fucking go through three miles of just tailgating to get to wherever you want. There's no way, dude. Um, I, now shutting down the stadium outside will be easy for the police because it's it just happens to be connected on these like four roads yeah. across so the police will have zero problem doing that in Columbus um what what the shame will be is if the bars and restaurants are closed then mm. These people have no place to watch it. Um, shout out to Chris Corso, a buddy of mine who owns like 11 fucking bars and restaurants in Columbus. And he's saying if, if there is no football this fall and the bars and restaurants are shut down, all of his restaurants will be out of business and bars. And mm -hmm. he owns the best in the city there in Columbus, a.k.a. Flavortown. Um, I don't think football plays. And I don't, I don't even know why you, we're, we're saying anything anymore. At this point... If I'm a college, I don't know what the point of this is. Like, you can, you might as well put a fucking vision board out. Uh, Did Ty Pennington involved somehow? Yeah, or, or just start giving out uh, DVDs of the secret here because you're praying for shit that's not going to happen. Um, there's no fucking way college football plays this year. I, I think it's going to play in the spring. Um, and then, look, I'm almost hoping for that now because that way, you know, a spring season will at least get a champion. It won't be interrupted. Uh, I don't. What, what the fuck are you gonna do? Let's say you have a Marlins situation. What are you just gonna not play for a week? Hey, Ohio State's gonna take the week off. We'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. Um, I gotta tell you, man. I I I've been seeing this this whole time. Unless uh, these leagues, professional or otherwise, develop an, uh, a larger appetite for dealing with positive COVID tests, mm -hmm. then it's, the season is not gonna happen. No. There's no way. It, no. It, if it does happen, it's not going to fucking last. No, and, and it's by, by, even by coming out and saying this, it's like, why? I, this is the dumbest shit ever. I will say this, though, uh, for the audience. If this does happen, and Dan and I are wrong somehow, and let's say there is fucking 20,000. Obviously, you and I started a ticket company now, Drinking mm -hmm. Bros. Tickets.com, that is live. I used it over the weekend, by the way. I bought some concert tickets. It's fucking crazy. I bought Third Eye Blind tickets. There was concerts in your car. We literally have everything on the planet on that goddamn site, by the way. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's amazing. Um, they were sold out, and I had to go to our own fucking website and buy tickets. And it works. It was great. Um, but that being said, if there's 20,000 20, people in the stadium, and it's open, and it's fucking cold, and I can wrap a scarf around my head and get mm -hmm. fucking crunk, I'm still going to go. Like, I, I'd still show up to the, to, to the game. and root my I think what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of private parties in big-ass fields yeah, somewhere is. in the city. Yep. That's, that's my guess. I mean, look, you can't fucking stop people. No. You, if there's any sport that you just can't shut down, <laughs> well, there's two. There's, there, one is college football in general, yeah. and the other one is basketball in Indiana. You can't, no, there's no way to shut down either one of those things. No. Uh, people will fucking riot. Or Carolina? Fuck, Carolina mm. Duke? I, dude, people will riot. You're right. Um, uh, 
Dan and I don't want to sound, sound like downers here because we're not. Um, I hope there's a fucking college season. I hope all this shit works out. Uh, my suggestion would be to, to yeah, do what Ohio State did with the, the fucking goddamn conference schedule. Play a conference schedule, play 10 games, and then immediately have your college football playoffs right afterwards, week after week. Yeah. Just roll through the season, play knock it out. 13 straight weeks. Yes. Yeah. Knock it out in 13 weeks. We're all done. I think we can have a champion that everybody would agree on, um, especially out of the Power Five conferences mm. uh, across the board. And, and I don't think anyone would bitch at that at all. Um, but I just, if if a Marlin situation happens, we we are now, Dan, we're 30 days away from the co- the first college football game. Yep. Uh, they haven't even gone to camp yet. What the fuck, man? Um, to like a hard hitting camp. Right yeah. Now yeah, they're yeah. just working out. Yeah. You haven't even put your pads on, taking licks yet. Um, I don't see how that's going to happen. I hope. Uh, look, I'll be there. Um, one of the, the rumors I have heard out of Ohio State, if that happens, if you're a fan or, or a Michigan fan, is they were talking about moving the, the Michigan game up to the first game of the season. Against so Ohio I, State? Yeah, get well, that out of the way. D- dead serious. So here's, here's why, they said, is let's say the season gets delayed or canceled or whatever, right? At least fans got their fucking favorite rivalry and – that tradition can at least live on. I am all for that. If you're going to go in all in for one game, let's see Auburn play Alabama. Let's see Ohio State Michigan. Let's see all of the fucking rivalry games we can in the yeah. first week. And uh, so at least we have that to hang our hats on. Do you think Michigan's pressing for this so they can fire Harbaugh right at the beginning of the season? <laughs> You know what I mean? Before he makes his little comeback and fucking does whatever. <laughs> I don't want to see Harbaugh Christ. fired. I know he's, you he's don't. the best thing to happen to Ohio State I don't football know, in years. <laughs> I don't know any fucking uh, Michigan fan that wants Harbaugh there. I mean, we don't have one. Uh, we don't have one at all. That Brad Primo guy um, was always talking shit about Michigan. That stopped uh, several years ago. But <laughs> Drew mm. Max, who works uh, with us on our, on our website, um, He's a Michigan fan, and he's embarrassed. Uh, he's the same way, but there is no coach out there. That's the best that they can get right now, so they're stuck, man. They're stuck with this fucking idiot. I khakis. can't believe that. It's true. It's weird, right? There has to true. be. There's got no. They, it's fucking Michigan. They could lure a, coach, a great coach from somewhere else for sure with the right amount of money. They're, they're paying Harbaugh a shitload of money. Uh, he's, he's the highest paid? Yeah. He's the highest paid in the Big Ten. Um, almost, I think he's only behind Saban, to be honest. With that won't point. last. Ryan Day will be making like $30 million oh, yeah. a year Ryan in a couple of years. He's a fucking genius. He's great. Um, let me ask you this, Dan. Uh, if they do do the rivalry games first, if Ohio State and mm. Michigan did that, um, owning a ticket company now, uh, drinkingbrostickets.com, um, can you imagine what the resale prices will be Oh yeah, for a rivalry game, if only twenty thousand people will be allowed in there, not, Jesus Christ! Not twenty thousand people, twenty percent. Well, for this, so twenty so for some of them, yeah, twenty percent is twenty thousand people. So for twenty twenty thousand at Ohio State, twenty thousand at Penn State, but not at like Notre Dame. They have eighty thousand no. capacity there, so yeah. you're talking like way less than that. That's like what sixty or uh, not sixty four. What is that? That's uh, sixteen thousand. Yeah, that's. I mean, goddamn, man. Ticket prices? Just to say you were in that stadium and, and to be there? Because to be honest, when you go to a huge stadium like an Ohio State or like a Tennessee, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we've been to pretty much every stadium there is. Uh, Alabama, even LSU. They're, you're jamming people in these seats. Um, they're not the most comfortable, these college stadiums. No, they're not. Um, every single one of them. At least you'll be able to spread out. <laughs> yeah, right? So imagine being able to watch a game. Like you, I picture you and I, because you and I go all, go to all this shit together, right? You would be able to stretch out your whole shit, smoke weed in front of literally everyone, because no one's going to stop you or prevent you from doing anything. Right. I mean, I do that anyways, but of course. But imagine you don't have anybody who's going to give you those looks of like, oh, gross. Is your friend smoking marijuana? It's like, yeah. Well, he's going to be smoking it the entire game, so you might as well get used to it. Yeah, um, not going to stop. So, <laughs> imagine having that now, where. You know, shit, man, 20, 20% at Ohio State would, would be very enjoyable. I would go in a second. I'd pay top dollar for those that's, tickets. That's still like 15,000 more fans than the goddamn Miami Marlins get for any game. Any game, yeah. It's like five. I think, actually, I think their attendance was like, like 9,000 yeah. or some shit their last game last year or something like that. I don't know. 20,000 is what's, uh, that's what Staples Center holds. It holds like 19.5. Mm-hmm. Um, so Most NBA arenas are somewhere between 18 and 20. Yeah, so I mean, shit, I, that'd be a blast if that happens. Um, selfishly, I would love just to see that game right up front. If, the, if that rumor is true, 
go to it, enjoy one game, and then if everybody gets the fucking COVID like the Marlins team did, and then they mm-hmm. that was it, the season was over, at least I have an answer on that and be like, all right, fuck you. And so whatever every other school who has a rivalry in conference, like, God damn it, could you imagine the opening opening week of football, right? You got Ohio State, Michigan, which is always the noon game, uh, and then that three thirty game would probably be Alabama, Auburn. Mm-hmm. Um, pure sex. Uh, who would be the night game for that? It usually puts uh, UCLA versus USC on that late. Game. I don't. Know, USC seems like they're getting primed to make some kind of comeback soon. They need a new coach, um, um, but it's got to be them and fucking Oregon, right? Because Washington's well, that's not Washington. That's not their rival. So their rival is is UCLA. Well, that's what I'm saying. Oregon would have to be the game. So be what Oregon, Oregon State. Who is who does LSU? Who's their rivalry? Is it Mississippi State? LSU's rival? Yeah, I think it's Mississippi State. I don't know. Um, Auburn. No. No. Geographic rival. Geographically, but I I think they're uh, they play for something. I think you got to play Auburn, Alabama. Miss, dude. Oh, fuck. Ole Miss, Mississippi State would be a great game that night. I mean, there's there's a bunch of rivalry games you could have on and just fucking light that up. And if that was opening week, my God, man, the ratings on that would probably carry you financially for a good couple months if you're one of the networks. You know goddamn well Fox wants that to go down. Uh, I don't know. I'm curious. We're going to have these answers real soon. So um, what they're saying is that we will have an answer by the first week of August of what is going to happen with the college football right, season. Well, that's what three days from now. Do. So Correct. Well, uh, so it's next week. So next week we're going to have an answer on that and uh, should have Biden, Biden's VP by then too. So. <laughs> I think I'm in the running for that, by the way. <laughs> I keep getting emails from his campaign asking me for money. I get like five emails a day Yeesh. from him. I hate to ask again, but can we get some dollars, please? Like, no, dude. No, you can't. Somebody, actually, I got a text from one of these campaign dummies uh, earlier. It says, hi, Daniel. It's Stephanie with Next Gen Wisconsin. The 2020 election is coming up, and the stakes of this election for young people couldn't be higher. I don't know how I qualify as young. I'm almost fucking 40. Uh, <laughs> can we count on you to celebrate national co- uh, hashtag vote by mail day by requesting your mail-in ballot? They're trying to like proselytize people to use yes. mail-in ballots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my response, uh, get fucked, nerd. <laughs> See you right there. And that's it? Get fucked, nerd. And they didn't write you back. No, unfortunately not. Usually I can bait them into stuff. Yeah. But maybe they're just super busy today. I don't I'm know. surprised you didn't blast off a dick pic. I would have gone dick pic. No, because that's a crime, I think. Oh, is it really? Oh, well, she's, well. It's a woman, presumably. Yeah. It's probably an Indian dude in a fucking cellar somewhere exactly. overseas. Exactly, in, in the Philippines. But um, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I do send fucked up memes sometimes, though. Yeah. Like bad ones. Yeah. Mostly um, stuff that would offend whomever I'm sending it to. So if I know these are lefties and they clearly are, I would send them something like kind of Trump me or something. Yeah. Not that I, w- I, 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 don't even, I don't even care about Trump. I just like to fuck with people. Of course. I would have written back like, um, hey, are you guys going to try to replace his mind with uh, a 28-year-old Joe Biden? How are you going to do that yeah. so you can talk? Even a 28-year-old Joe Biden probably wouldn't be that great. Sniffing. I mean, what's he done exactly? Look, man. If, uh, like his career, the biggest the biggest piece of legislation he ever got passed was the goddamn crime bill yeah. that fucking fucked over black people. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> how how what what's, what's his resume looking like these days? <sighs> not much. What's he looking like these days? No idea because we're not seeing and liver spots. Him, yeah, dementia. Um, maybe he's got like something stuck up his nose and it's fucking with his brain. We need to look up there, probably. Yeah, take a little like, peeksies. He was playing with some of those little action figures and popped one up his nose like a child. Yeah. Now it's poking on the fucking memory center of his brain. You never know, dude. Yeah, you it's either know. that or he's old as fuck and has dementia. I'd probably. like to get an MRI and see if there's any uh, little toys up there. Uh, there is MRIs are really expensive these days. They are. They are. I just like had three thousand dollars. Just had one. Yeah. Ah, I think mine was like seven hundred dollars. Um. Yeah, whatever. maybe that's what you paid. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The overall cost. Who yeah. fucking knows? I know I paid seven hundred bucks for it. By the way, that's what we're doing now. We're just trusting the pharmaceutical industry to tell us what's right and wrong. This video of these doctors that's getting pulled down repeatedly mm-hmm. by social, uh, Facebook and Twitter and everybody else. Um, they're real doctors for sure. I don't know if what they're saying is real or. I mean, I presume since there's like eighty of them, yeah, that what they're saying is right. I don't know if it's statistically relevant because they've only treated six or three hundred fifty patients sure. so far. Sure. Um, 350 is a lot. Statistical relevance, 
and sampling like that usually comes from a much broader set like 2000 plus and it has right. to be a, not geographically co located and all that bullshit but anyways the information keeps getting taken down 27 million views my theory is this on facebook by the way my theory is that if i'm the pharmaceutical industry that's getting first of all the government the u.s government meaning you the taxpayer is currently paying the r d that they would spend hundreds of millions of dollars on to make a drug right now yeah. The U.S. government is paying for it, which means you're paying for it. Mm -hmm. We're paying these motherfuckers who are going to charge us for the drug yeah. once it's made. So if you're in that kind of situation where you're spending none of your own money and you stand to profit billions, billions of dollars, maybe trillions, if it goes global, if this particular vaccine goes global, you might be talking about trillions of dollars over time. <sighs> if I find out that not only is there a cure, but it's fucking readily available and cheap. Yep. I'm shutting that shit down as fast as possible. Yeah, I'm so, spending all of my money and time trying to fucking make that look like nonsense, trying to convince anybody who fucking uh, even sees that, that anybody who believes in hydroxychloroquine is a fucking nut job and it's got a cousin like Trump, man. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with that. I haven't seen any evidence to suggest that it doesn't work. And all the evidence I've seen suggests that it does, right? Yeah, so I look... But I don't know. I, I will for sure. say this: there was a there was a report last week that the government has signed a deal with Pfizer. So Pfizer is going to be the, and then this German company who's producing it. Uh, they're saying the vaccine will be available for free when it comes out, and they have ordered up to five hundred million doses, uh, is what they have said. And there aren't that many people, right? Um, the, the initial order, I guess, is going to be three hundred million, uh, and then it will go up to five hundred million. I'm assuming. Um, that is people traveling in the country mm -hmm. or <coughs> illegals and all that other shit. Well, if you um, remember. So it will be free, but at what cost, I guess, is. Uh, it'll be, what, what do you mean it'll be is. free? Um, they're going to give you the vaccine for free. So you walk in, I guess, to like a Rite Aid. And the government is going to give me something for free. Correct. Fuck that. <laughs> there is a 0% chance, a 0% chance that I'm taking that vaccine. Exactly it'll never Jesse fucking said, happen. Yeah. Get yeah. fucked, yeah. loser. Yeah. And I'm, then they're, I'm, I'm But that's you. the thing. The pharmaceutical industry will try to say, like, well, you're just an anti-vaxxer now. You belong in that group. Right. Because at some point, it's not going to be free. I don't give a fuck what they say. The first round of vaccines might be free. But then they're going to go back to the government like, well, it worked. I mean, we can't keep doing it for free. This isn't a charity, man. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how these fucking deals always work. It's like a fucking goddamn drug dealer. The first hit's always free, bitch. Yeah. Open your fucking eyes. God damn it, man. Yeah. So I, look, we're, we're going to find out what goes on here. But uh, by I, the way, I the guy, the guy that's running Operation uh, Warp Speed, which is the government uh project to get a vaccine made mm -hmm. has i don't know fucking millions and millions of dollars invested in big pharma and there was also the fucking uh uh the inspector general ruled on that case that i talked about in the fake news a couple of weeks ago saying he could continue to do that while presiding okay. over the goddamn vaccine process yeah so congratulations guys bend over Grab those ankles. Don't worry about lube because none's coming, man. No. You're just getting fucking dry fucked in your butthole. Welcome to America. <laughs> I wish we could bet on that on my bookie. Uh, and on that note, there's no better way to end the show than on a, on a quote like that, Dan. It should be on mm. a t-shirt and it should be on business cards and bumper stickers near you shortly. Um, if there is football, you can go to drinkingbrostickets.com and buy all your shit. Um, about eight bucks, eight to ten bucks cheaper than uh, StubHub. So fuck it. Um, sports wise, uh, I, look, NBA is two days away. So you can bet on mybookie.com. Promo code drinkingbros will match you dollar for dollar and double your deposits. Do that now. I'm going to be betting on all these fucking games, watching mm. the shit out of that. So I'm excited about that. And I hope baseball doesn't go away. Uh, I've enjoyed it the last uh, few days, and it's been a nice uh, reprieve from all this bullshit that's going on in the media, trying to convince us that we're all going to die. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. Good night, everyone. In the world of today, strength and power lie with the legendary overlord of all knowledge, the Castle Master. He holds all the keys. All of them. Which is why Kill Cliff, the clean energy drink company, 
is tickled that the Castle Master has joined our award-winning customer service team. You shouldn't be doing your calls from the bathroom. Next caller, go ahead. Hey, Cosmos. Uh-huh. I, I need to see your face. Yeah, no, my video's not working today, so. Is this right, Kathy? Uh -huh. What? Yeah. Hey, drink more Kill Cliff. Kathy. What? All right, next, next caller. How long are you going to be in there? Hey, Cosmos. Yeah. What are Hold you on. doing in there? Ma! I'm in the freaking toilet, answering some calls. Do people know you're sitting on the pot? No, I'm on mute and there's no video. Do your calls from somewhere else. Yeah, I'll be out in a minute. I've got to get in there. Yeah, go ahead. You got the cast mask. How long are you going to be in there? Who is that? Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just drink more Kill Cliff. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't even ask you a question. <laughs> I have to take a jump now. This is getting ugly. Awesome new flavors. Awesome new cans. And an awesome new customer service representative. Kill Cliff. Own it. Go to killcliff.com.